This video is going to show you how to upload and download program settings and images using the CVX simulator software that's connected to your CVX controller. So you can see I'm starting off with um, using our Vision Terminal software connected to a live controller using a remote, remote desktop here. So you can see I have a program that's already set up. It's got a couple tools in it. And, and I also want to download some images. So to be able to download images, you want to make sure you have a few images in the archive. Uh, the archive, by the way, is automatically set up, so you don't have to do anything to set it up. But you do need to inspect or trigger on a few parts while in run mode. So if you want to confirm you have images in the archive, just simply click the archive button here down below and it will show you if there's any images in the archive and you can see that I have three images currently in the archive right now so I'm going to download those images as well when I download the settings so I'll just confirm that so in order to do the upload and download you need to either have an Ethernet connection to the controller or a USB connection so the USB connection by the way will only work with the CVX 200 series controllers if you have a CVX 100 series controller you have to do the Ethernet connection and uh, just to give you some background on that, uh, under the global settings, communications I.O. network, that's the place where you can set the IP address uh, that works for your setup. As a default out of the box, the IP address is 192.168.0.10, and you can see the subnet setting there. So if you're going to use the default address, your PC is going to need to be set at 192.168.0, and then the last, the, the fourth number needs to be different. So. For example, 192.168.0.100 or .11, just a different number. Um, so you might want to check with your IT department if you're going to connect over the Ethernet just to make sure you have the proper IP settings. Uh, this can obviously go over the network as well. If you have a valid IP address for your network, you can do this right over the network. So uh, again, if you do the USB connection, it's just a standard USB uh, connection. The USB driver is automatically loaded when you install the software, so you shouldn't have to mess around with that. So let me uh, minimize that out of the way and let's open up our simulator software. You can see I already have it open here, the CVX simulator software. And if you want to upload and download from a connected controller, you simply click this upload download button. Very easy. And what that'll do is open up the uh, workspace upload download section. So if you want to download from the controller, you simply click this download from controller tab. Very easy. And if you have a valid connection right now, It'll, the connection should show up right here. You can see we have the 192.168.0.10 connection going on here. And if you expand this little menu tree, you can actually view uh, files and programs that are on SD1. And if you had any programs on SD2, you can see those as well. Um, so you select the files that you want to download. That's the first step. So right now, say you want to just download everything on SD1. I'll just leave everything checked. So I'll leave all the programs checked. Now, if you want to download those images that I showed you from the archive, you need to make sure you click this button down here that says Download Capture File. Um, that'll be the function that you need to download from the archive. Now this is assuming that images are already in the archive. If there is no images in the archive, it won't download any images. But if you click this details tab, it'll, it'll show you the details. As a default, it's just going to simply download the latest 20 images. Um, that's what we're going to do. If you want, you could actually specify specifically how many OK images you want and how many no good images you want. And as a default, it's just going to create one simulator image folder. But if you want to create separate folders, uh, for the OK images and separate folders for the no good images in the same letter, you can do that just by checking this box. But we're going to go ahead and leave this unchecked. Um, so I'm just going to simply download archived images and I'm going to leave it the latest. And so I'm going to click OK. And then when you're ready, you can click download. But before you do that, you could either select an existing workspace to download to or you can simply click add new workspace if you want to just start a new one. So I'm going to just start a new one. So I'm going to click that and click download. It's going to ask you for a name. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it test you know, for our example purposes, and click OK. So what it'll do is it'll download all those program settings and images for the current program only, by the way. So if you're downloading from the archive, it will only be images for the currently running program. So in our case, it was that program one. So you can see the download's complete. I'm going to click OK. I'll go ahead and click Close. And you can see the test simulator is now in our workspace list. So what I can do is simply launch it, and it will open up the simulator. Move this over into that program settings that we just downloaded. And you can see it included those three images that I had in the archive. So if you include the images from the archive, they'll automatically be loaded into the simulator. And what you can do now is you can do edits to the program if you want offline. So uh, for example, let's say we want to add a tool to this system. So I'm going to go ahead and add tools. And I'll just do a simple color tool. Let's say we just want to check color presence absence. So I'll click OK. And I'll just leave the window default and click OK. Of course, you would set up all the 
other limits and stuff that you want. But let's say we just wanted to add this color tool. Now I could test this tool out in the simulator first. Click through the images, make sure I like it. So if everything's cool, what I could do is go ahead and close, if you, as long as you saved your settings, just go ahead and close the simulator. Now if I want to upload to that controller, I just simply do the opposite. I click the upload download again, bring that over here, and click the upload to controller tab. So, and then find your workspace, in this case it was test. And again, you can expand the menu. If you just want to load just the one program, you can uncheck the others. You can do the same thing. You can load all the programs at once or individually. If you want to upload the global settings, so if you've changed anything in the global menu, you can check mark that to include that. But as a default, it won't upload the global setting, just the program itself. So that's a, an optional setting here. And obviously, you can see the controller here. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply click Upload. It's going to be a one-to-one -one transfer. So basically, it'll upload this program one to program one on the controller. So I'll click Upload. It'll give me a, a warning to say, hey, there's a program that exists. Do you want to overwrite it? I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So it'll upload the new settings to the controller. And uh, it'll upload the images too. So sometimes it might take a little while, depending on how many images you have, the registered images that is. And then that's it. Once you're done, you can go ahead and close that menu. And I'll bring back up the vision terminal window here. So you can see the live connection to the controller. And you can see my new tool has now been added to the controller side. This is the live connection with remote desktop. And, and that's it. I simply uploaded the new settings and I'm off and running. So you can just. If you see how easy it is to simply upload and download using an Ethernet or USB connection if you have the CDX200 series.